Hey everybody, welcome back to the Consumer Warrior Podcast. This is the podcast that's dedicated to helping you with your big debt problems. If you're just dabbling in debt, this isn't the podcast for you. We deal with the big debt problems, repossession, debt collection, lawsuit, foreclosure, bankruptcy, and all the other horrible financial things that are out there. We are here to help you to help yourself. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, John Skiba, and uh, Happy New Year. I'm recording this in early January 2018. And uh, But the information I'm going to share today is going to be applicable no matter what time of the year you're listening to this episode. And in this new year, uh, you know, I am like everybody else. I start off and do uh, New Year's resolutions, things that I want to change, things that I want to make better about this year. I know for a lot of people, 2017 was a pretty rough year, particularly financially. And so this year, if you're like a lot of people, you're going to be reaching out and trying to figure out a way and put together a plan to help you deal with your debt problem going forward. And that's what I want, in, in, along those lines, what I want to talk about today is how do you figure out what exactly it is that you owe? Now, <clears throat> I know this seems kind of strange, <laughs> you know, to say, you know, how, what do you mean you don't know what you owe? You, people know what they owe. But I can tell you as someone who's met with thousands of families over the last 15 years in my law practice, uh, who are in financial problems, one of the big issues is it just gets so overwhelming that people stop paying attention, uh, particularly in light of how the system works now with collection agencies and debt buying entities. It's tough to know who you owe, how much you owe. And so people really just stop paying attention. Some people just put their head in the sand and you know, they're just done with it. They're not going to really pay attention to what it is that they actually owe. So what I wanted to do in this episode is tell you how you can figure out what exactly it is that you owe. And this is all the really the first step in your process of really taking control of your debt problem and figuring out ways to get things resolved. So we're going to talk about how you can find out what it is that you owe and some different resources. Um, I also want to share with you a, a three apps that I use on my phone uh, to help with financial issues. Uh, everybody likes kind of the new gadgets, <laughs> the new apps and things like that when it comes to finances. I want to share with you a few apps that I use that I think can be helpful for you in the new year. And <clears throat> I think all of this information is timely because it's interesting. I just read an article that uh, we set a new record here in the United States here in uh, November of 2017. The country broke a new record for all-time credit card debt, which isn't much of a record to break. But I can tell you, where we're at in the country right now, there's uh, $1.023 trillion, with a T trillion dollars, in outstanding credit card debt in the United States. And that is a, that's a staggering number. Even as someone who works in this field all the time, uh, you know, I hear that number, tr a trillion dollars is owed, uh, is pretty pretty amazing. Um, and it broke a record. And something that makes should make us all a little bit nervous is that the last the, the record, the previous record was set in April of 2008. And uh, you may be thinking back to April 2008, what was happening then, that's when the world <laughs> fell apart financially. Uh, that was the beginning of the uh, Great Recession. And uh, something which, you know, we're just still climbing out of now, some people are still ha are feeling the effects of that. Um, but that, that that's the last time that this record, the, the, the debt amounts were this high. And so that should all give us some pause as far as to our uh, credit card status and the health of our credit cards and what, what we're doing there as far as the uh, paying, you know, putting uh, charges on the cards but not paying them off. So, um, and I, I think that now it's particularly important to focus on that because the, the economy definitely is better. Um, I'm here in Arizona and I am seeing that all over. We're seeing a lot more construction, we're seeing jobs. You know, things are better. People seem to be feeling better about uh, the economy in general. But you got to be careful. This is the time to pay off those cards, not just think, well, I can cover the monthly minimum, so I'm just going to continue to spend on them. Now is the time to get out of it so you don't end up in bankruptcy down the road. But um, so let's jump into today's topic. Today's topic is, you know, how do you find out what debts you actually owe? And I want to give you a couple of resources to be able to figure this out. Now, the first place you should start is your credit report. 
Now, again, a lot of people that are in financial difficulties, they're not spending a whole bunch of time studying the credit report uh, just because it just brings up bad, bad memories and bad thoughts. So, But you can get a free copy of your credit report. Federal law says you can get a free copy of your credit report every year if you go over to the website annualcreditreport.com annual annualcreditreport.com and you'll get you can download once a year a free copy of your report and see what's on there it's important to know you're not going to get your credit score that's something you're going to have to pay for but for our purposes we don't really care about the score right now we're just trying to see what's out there what kind of accounts are out there uh, who owns the accounts now cuz you'll see the debts change hands so if you used to have a uh, credit card with Citibank, maybe now a debt buyer like Cavalry SPV or Midland Funding, maybe they own it now. Uh, you want to see who exactly it is, owns the debt, how much they're claiming is owed, and uh, then that's going to be the, really the foundation for you to be able to start reaching out to creditors and putting together a plan, whether it's through debt settlement, whether it's bankruptcy, you know, you got to know who to contact even if you're filing for bankruptcy. Uh, th this is one of the key documents you need to look at and really go through and pay attention to the information that's in there because the data that you're able to pull from that, that's like I said, going to be the foundation for you putting together a plan to, uh, to deal with your debt problem. Now, um, something else that you want to do is not only see, you know, credit cards, medical bills, all those kinds of things. It's important that you look to see if there have been any lawsuits filed against you. Now, in the world of debt buying, where most credit cards are charged off once they go 180 days with no payment and then sold to debt buying entities, the business model of the debt buying entities is to sell the debt and uh, then they sue on it. You know, the, the, that's their business model. They, they purchase it, they want to sue on it, get a judgment, garnish wages. And so it's, it may be that there's an old account that's not even on your credit report anymore. You know, derogatory information falls off of your credit report uh, in approximately seven years from the time that it went on there. Not only that, uh, back in July of 2017, they changed the rules and the credit reports no longer list judgments in the public records section of your credit report unless it contains your full social security number, which I have never seen that happen. I don't think you're going to see that happen because it would violate all their kinds of privacy laws if they were doing that. So it's entirely possible that you're gonna go over to annualcreditreport.com, get a copy of your credit report, and there may be other significant debts that are still out there in the form of judgments. Now, how you wanna be able to find those is you ought to do a Google search for the uh, various courts in your area, whether they are justice courts, superior courts, district courts, look out, look those up by the county name, the city name, and many of the courts nowadays have the ability to search online to determine if there's an active or an old case. So you can go on there, you can see uh, what the judgments are, um, get case numbers, you might have to go down and talk to the clerk of the court to see exactly what's going on, but those are some of the ways that you can find that. Um, you also want to search for any public records uh, that may have been filed against you as far as like tax liens or if judgments may have been filed. You can find those by searching through uh, going online and looking at the county recorder. In most states and counties, there is a recorder where legal documents like deeds and liens and judgments are filed. You can go online and search those in many cases as well. And it's usually completely free to do that. So you want to, the first thing is the credit report over annualcreditreport.com. Then you want to do some public record searches to see if there's any judgments or uh, liens that are out there. And then one other tool that I would recommend that you do is get any current statements you have, any current credit card statements, um, and kind of put all this together so that you can start putting together a spreadsheet, a uh, ledger, whatever you want to do. Just put something down where you can figure out exactly what is owed and who it is owed to. Um, that's going to be the foundation for you to be able to put together any type of settlement proposal plan, even if it's bankruptcy that you're ended up doing. This information is going to be needed by your bankruptcy attorney uh, to kind of get things on track. So this is going to be a, a series of uh, episodes that I'm going to do as far as what you can do in this new year and putting together a game plan to get rid of your debt. Uh, but this is the very first step is just gathering the information having some idea of where it's at. You know, you may be surprised. Maybe it's not as bad as you thought, or 
maybe you're going to get this and you're going to think, wow, uh, I have been ignoring this for a long time and things are really bad. Uh, so you, this is where we need to start. We need to start just by finding what information is out there uh, to help you to move forward. So in uh, wrapping up this episode, I thought one thing I would share with you is that there are a few apps out there that I use on my phone that can help you in your uh, process of becoming financially, you know, together this year. And um, I thought I'd share those with you. One of them, uh, one of the best budgeting apps out there is Every Dollar. This is an app that's put together by... Uh, this is Dave Ramsey's group. I think it's the Lampo group. If you look, like in the App Store on, you know, for the iPhone, but every dollar it gives you the ability to put together a budget and really to record the information as you go along. Uh, this is something my wife and I have been using for a long time. Uh, my wife loves it; she keeps track of everything there. You can import the information from your bank accounts, and it really helps you stay on track as far as a budget, helping put together a budget. Uh, another one that I use is Acorns. Now, Acorns is a kind of a really cool app that helps you to save money and actually to invest it as well. What it does is once you sign up, you connect a bank account to it. And for every purchase you make, it rounds up to the next dollar and takes that money and puts it into an investment account for you. And then it invests it in various stocks and funds. Um, and over time, it grows. It's meant to be like a retirement type account for people who have difficulty in saving or putting money aside. So um, it's kind of a neat little thing where you don't realize how quickly it adds up. You know, for example, if you go to the grocery store and you spend $10.50, it'll round up to $11.00. Uh, take the extra 50 cents and deposit that into a, the account. And it just does this with your change over time. And it's, it, this is kind of the uh, high-tech version of the, the old change jar, you know, sitting there in the, in the kitchen where people at the end of the day throw all their change that's in their pockets. It not only takes that change, it, it helps you to save that change, but then it actually invests it and it starts to grow over time. So this has been something that's kind of cool that I've uh, played around with and it actually pleasantly surprised that the, the balance does build up and you actually start earning some uh, interest on that and uh, it starts to grow. So uh, that's Acorns. Um, the final one that I have actually in my phone right now is a uh, old reliable is uh, Credit Karma. I think most people have this. Credit Karma, the, the thing that I like about it is it's one, it's always being updated. It's always changing. And the information that they're and the, the resources and the tools that they have in there is continually being upgraded. Uh, for instance, right now you can access TransUnion and Equifax. You can look at both of your credit scores there. But not only that, with TransUnion, you can actually dispute uh, things that you don't agree with on your uh, credit report directly in the app. Um, Equifax has a button for it, but it just takes you over to the Equifax website. But um, that's one of my favorites, just because you can kind of track the credit score. And to me, if it's something where it's you know top of mind and you're aware of it and you're thinking about it, it's something that uh, you're going to be able to uh, be more conscious of some of the credit choices uh, that you're making. So those are the three that I have, every dollar for budgeting, Acorns for retirement investing, and Credit Karma for just keeping track of your credit score. So that is going to do it for this episode of the Consumer Warrior Podcast. Appreciate you listening today. Appreciate all those who are, you know, they're starting to see the, the show is starting to grow. If you, uh, if the information is helpful in the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you head over to iTunes, leave us a review, leave me some feedback. Um, you can also learn more about my site uh, over at consumerwarrior.com. Um, and don't forget, we have a lot of free templates, downloads, video tutorials on how to deal with like debt collection, lawsuits, bankruptcy, death settlement. You know, if you're if you're starting this whole process of trying to get out of debt and you're not sure what to do, uh, I have some great tutorials over there. Uh, some are paid, some are free, but there's a lot of good resources to help you to get out of debt. Um, Consumerwarrior.com. You can also go to legal.coach download some of those free templates uh, and other resources there. So that's going to do it for this episode of the show. Appreciate you listening and we'll catch you next time.